this week's Cardiology Countdown, we have two papers from JAMA and one from Jack. We'll begin with one paper in JAMA that looks at the incidence of developing new onset diabetes with high dose versus standard dose statin therapy. It's been previously seen that statins versus placebo lead to a, about a 10 or 12 percent higher risk of developing diabetes. And the question of higher dose uh, would potentially be even a higher risk. And so in a collaborative meta-analysis, I was actually part of this, uh, it was observed that, in fact, the risk of developing new onset diabetes was higher with the high-dose statins as compared with standard doses of statins. It was about a 12% higher risk. On the other hand, there was a 16% lower risk of cardiovascular events. And so in absolute terms, for every 1,000 patients treated with high-dose statins, two patients would develop new onset diabetes, but 6.5 fewer patients would develop a major cardiovascular event. And so something to bear in mind is the benefit to risk ratio of statins and intensive statin therapy. Then we have two papers, the first from Jack, um, looking at ST elevation MI management. One is the trial report of the Lipsia STEMI trial that looked at facilitated PCI, in particular for patients who had a long distance to travel, in this case, more than 70 kilometers. They did a randomized study of 160 patients and used uh, cardiac MR to look at infarct size to discriminate between a facilitated PCI strategy using tenecteplase, followed by PCI, versus just transfer for primary PCI. Now, they found many more open arteries at the time of the start of the primary PCI when facilitation was done with lytic. It was 76 versus 28 percent. But they actually found a larger infarct size on CMR. And this was a strong trend um, in, in addition to seeing more microvascular obstruction. And so this adds to the growing body of evidence understanding the mechanism by which the prothrombotic side of thrombolysis may actually be hurting rather than helping uh, PCI. And so that brings us to our number one pick, um, which highlights a new performance measure, the door-in, door-out time, uh, in relation to the overall door-to-balloon time for primary PCI but in this case, focusing on patients who present to one hospital and need transfer. A proposed door-in, door-out time of when you arrive at the first hospital to when you leave that first hospital to go to the tertiary care cath lab uh, of less than 30 minutes has been proposed. When they looked in um, a large database in the action registry, uh, only 11% of patients met this door-in, door-out time of less than 30 minutes. Those who had longer door-in, door-out times were, not surprisingly, older women came in off hours and also had arrived um, by non-EMS uh, methods to the first hospital. This was also associated with um, a higher mortality, about a 50% higher mortality. And so it looks like this will be a useful metric for the transfer hospitals to try and keep that door in, door out time to less than 30 minutes. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Gannon.